Today's lesson will be over basic stoichiometry calculations. Please have out your notes, something to write with, and your periodic table. There are three steps to a basic stoic problem. You must learn these steps. They are the key to success in this unit. Step one, you're going to identify the given and convert it to moles using one of the three mole conversion factors that we have learned. If it is already in moles, you don't need this step. Step two, this step is absolutely required. You must identify the unknown and do a mole to mole ratio between the given and the unknown using the coefficients from the balanced equation. This is the key step. It gets you from moles of given to moles of unknown. Step three, you're going to convert the unknown to the unit specified in the problem. If you are asked to solve for moles, you don't need this step. To summarize, here are the three steps again. First, convert to moles if needed. Second, moles to moles ratio, which is absolutely required. Step three, convert to specified unit if not moles. If you are asked for moles, then you are done. When you are doing these problems on your own, I would advise that you write these summarized steps down in order to not get lost. We have this equation right here, which we must balance first. Here are the coefficients once it is balanced. This is going to be a mole-to-mole -mole problem. The question asks, how many moles of aluminum could be produced from 13.0 moles of aluminum oxide? We must always start by writing down the given, which is 13.0 moles of aluminum oxide. Step one, which I have up here, says convert to moles if needed. Well, our given is already in moles. Therefore, we don't need to convert. Which brings us to step two, which is moles to moles ratio. Moles to moles ratio simply means having moles on top and moles on bottom. Since my given is in moles of aluminum oxide, I must place moles of aluminum oxide on the bottom so I can cancel it out. The question asks for moles of aluminum. Therefore, moles of aluminum should be on top. I have left blank space right here so I can put in the corresponding number, which comes from the coefficient. In front of moles aluminum oxide, I'm going to have two. And in front of moles aluminum, I'm going to put four according to the balanced equation. Since my units worked out, all I have to do is multiply across the top and divide by the bottom, SO. The answer is 26.0 moles of aluminum. Lastly, you must remember to check sig figs. The given 13.0 has three sig figs. Therefore, the answer has to have three sig figs. Now take a minute, pause the video, and try this next problem on your own. Welcome back. Once again, we start with the given, which is five moles of aluminum. Our given is already in moles, so you don't need step one. You can go straight to step two. In moles to moles ratio, moles of aluminum must be on the bottom in order to cancel out with the given. Moles of aluminum oxide will be on top in order to answer the question. The numbers come from the balanced equation. Therefore, you have five moles of aluminum times two moles of aluminum oxide divide by four moles of aluminum, multiply across, divide by bottom, is equal to three moles of aluminum oxide. Now we're going to move on to a mole to particle problem. I have the summarized steps right here so that we can refer to them as we go along. The question asks, how many molecules of aluminum oxide are needed to produce 1.85 moles of aluminum? Of course, we start by writing down our given, which is 1.85 moles of aluminum. That one says, convert to moles if needed. Our given is already in moles. Therefore, we can go straight to step two, which is moles to moles ratio. In moles to moles ratio, we must have moles of aluminum on the bottom so that it can cancel out with moles of aluminum in the given. Moles of aluminum oxide will be on top because the question wants us to get to aluminum oxide. I'm going to fill in the blanks using the coefficients from the balanced equation. Two moles of aluminum oxide over four moles of aluminum. Step three, convert to specified unit 
if not moles. The question is asking for molecules of aluminum oxide. Therefore, I need to get rid of moles aluminum oxide by putting on the bottom so that it cancels out. And I must put molecules of aluminum oxide on the top in order to answer the question. The numbers I'm going to use come from the mole conversion unit above, where one mole of aluminum oxide is going to be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of aluminum oxide. In this case, I'm going to write it as 6.02E23, as it should be entered on your calculator for convenience. You can multiply across the top and divide by the bottom in order to get 5.57E23, as it is shown in your calculator, which is the same as 5.57 times 10 to the 23 molecules of aluminum oxide. Your given has three sig figs, Therefore, your answer must have three sig fig. Now I want you to pause the video and try problem four on your own. Welcome back. You should write down the given first. Well, we don't have moles. Therefore, you will have to do step one by getting rid of atoms and on the top placing moles of aluminum. Step two, which is always required, is moles to moles ratio. The question asks for oxygen. Therefore, you will need to get rid of moles aluminum by placing it on the bottom so it cancels out with the previous unit and placing moles of oxygen on top. Step three, convert to specified unit, if not moles. The question is asking for moles, therefore you can stop. And your answer, as you multiply across the top and divide by the bottom, turns out to be 0 0.00150 moles of O2. At the very end, always check for the correct sig fix. This problem will deal with mole to mass. Question number five. How many grams of oxygen would be produced from 22 moles of aluminum oxide? Here I have already started by writing down the given. Well, I already have moles, so I can skip step one and go straight to step two. For this step, I'm trying to go from aluminum oxide to O2. Therefore, I will put aluminum oxide on the bottom so the unit can cancel out with the previous. The numbers come from the coefficients in the balanced equation. Now step three, convert to specified unit, if not moles. The question is asking for how many grams of O2. Therefore, I need to put moles of oxygen on the bottom so it can cancel out with the previous unit and putting grams of oxygen on top to answer the question. The numbers will correspond to this conversion factor where one mole is equal to x grams. In this case, x is the molar mass of O2, which is 31.998 grams. The calculator answer will be 1055.9, but according to the given, I can only have two sig figs. Therefore, these two numbers matter, and before the five goes away, it will round up that zero, and our final answer will be rounded to 1100 grams oxygen. Now pause the video and try number six on your own. Welcome back. You are given 890 grams of aluminum oxide. Well, you do need to get to moles. Therefore, you're gonna get rid of grams of aluminum oxide and getting to moles of aluminum oxide. This number, 101.961, is the molar mass of aluminum oxide. Now that step one is complete, you can do moles to moles ratio. You are going from moles of aluminum oxide to moles of aluminum. You do not need step three because the specified unit is moles. Therefore, your answer should have been 17 moles of aluminum. Always check for sig figs. Here's a mole to volume problem. 12.4 liters of oxygen gas at STP are produced when how many moles of aluminum oxide decompose? We start with the given, 12.4 liters of oxygen. Well, we don't have moles, therefore we need to get rid of liters oxygen and get to moles. The numbers come from the conversion factor above, where one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. With step one complete, and we have moles of oxygen to start with, now we move on to step two which is moles to moles ratio. In moles to moles ratio, we place mole of oxygen on the bottom because we no longer need it. So 
and we place more of aluminum oxide on top, we don't need step three because the question is asking for how many moles of aluminum oxide, and we already end up with having moles of aluminum oxide on top. The final answer is 0.369 moles of aluminum oxide. Now pause the video and I want you to try problem eight. Your given is 65.7 moles of aluminum oxide. We already have moles, therefore we don't need step one. Moving on to step two, we're going to get rid of moles aluminum oxide by placing it on the bottom so it cancels out. And the question wants us to go to oxygen gas. The question ask for how many liters of O2 gas. Therefore, we need to get rid of moles of oxygen and placing liters of oxygen on top as a unit. The final answer is 20 to 10 liters of oxygen gas. Now we go to mixed practice, where all three steps are present. Question nine asks, how many grams of oxygen would be produced from 641 grams of aluminum oxide? I have written down the given, our given is in grams. We need to get it to moles. We're going to get rid of grams aluminum oxide by placing it on the bottom, getting it to moles on top. The numbers correspond to one mole is equal to x grams, where x is the molar mass of aluminum oxide. In this case, 101.96 grams. Now that step one is done, we can move on to step two, which is moles to moles ratio. We're going to have moles of aluminum oxide on the bottom because we need to get rid of it. Moles of O2 will be on top because the question is asking for grams of oxygen. So we must get rid of moles of oxygen by putting on the bottom so it cancels out with the previous unit and put grams of oxygen on top. 31.998 is the molar mass of oxygen. The final answer is 302 grams of oxygen. Now I want you to pause the video and try problem 10 on your own. Welcome back. In this problem, you are given 50.0 grams of aluminum. This is step one. You're starting with grams and you need to get rid of it in order to get to moles of aluminum to even start the problem. Once step one is done, you can get to step two, which is moles to moles ratio. This time you are getting rid of moles of aluminum and answer the question, by going to moles of oxygen. For this problem, you need step three because they ask for how many liters of oxygen gas. The specified unit here is liters of oxygen, which is why it goes on top. Therefore, you need to get rid of your moles of oxygen by placing on the bottom. Also, in step one, this 26.982 grams is the molar mass for aluminum. Your final answer turns out to be 31.1 liters of oxygen. Problem 11. How many grams of oxygen gas are produced when 7.50 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of aluminum are also produced? I already have this problem set up right here. You are starting with atoms of aluminum. Well, you do need moles. You need to get rid of atoms of aluminum and get to moles of aluminum. This is step one. Step two, moles to moles ratio. You need to get rid of moles of aluminum and get to oxygen. Therefore, moles of oxygen goes on top. The coefficients from the balanced equation goes in step two. The question is asking how many grams of oxygen gas. Therefore, you do need to do step three. You're going to get rid of moles of oxygen by placing it on the bottom. And on top, you're going to get to grams of oxygen. Remember that this number, 31.998, is the molar mass of O2. This is step three. And your final answer is 2.99 grams of oxygen, which has 366. Problem 12. Now we are dealing with a new balanced equation. It asks how many grams of copper 2 nitrate will be produced if 0.750 moles of copper are available. Starting with the given 0.750 moles of copper, you do not need to do step one because you're already in moles. You're gonna go straight to step two, moles to moles ratio. Copper to nitrate goes on top because that's what the question is asking for. The numbers come from your coefficients in the balanced equation. Moles of copper will cancel with moles of copper. The question asks for how many grams of copper to nitrate? Therefore, you will need to do step three. 
In step three, you're going to get rid of moles of copper to nitrate. On top, you will answer the question by putting grams of copper to nitrate. Your final answer is 141 grams of copper to nitrate, which has three sig figs, just like the given. Problem 13. How many liters of nitrogen monoxide at STP can be produced from 50.6 grams of copper? Your given is grams of copper, therefore you have to do step one, converting to moles. You will get rid of grams copper by placing it on the bottom for it to cancel out with the given, and moles copper on top in order to complete step one. Step two, which is moles to moles ratio, you will get rid of moles copper by placing it at the bottom so that it can cancel out, and putting moles of nitrogen monoxide on top the numbers come from the coefficients. The specified unit in this question is how many liters of nitrogen monoxide. Therefore, you will have to do step three. You will get rid of moles of nitrogen monoxide by putting at the bottom and liters of nitrogen monoxide on the top. And your final answer is 11.9 liters of nitrogen monoxide. Now I want you to pause the video and try problem 14 on your own. Welcome back. This problem should be fairly simple. You are starting with moles of water, therefore you don't need to do step one. Step two, moles to moles ratio. You can get rid of moles of water and get to moles of nitric acid, just as the question asks. There is no need for step three because the specified unit that they asked for is moles. Therefore, you are done. Your answer, which has two sig figs, just like you're given. And that's the end of today's lesson. Make sure that you remember and follow these three steps. They will make your life much easier in this unit.